to another video. Today I'm going to share with you some easy cheat meals using potatoes. I picked these fresh from my garden this morning, scrubbed them up, and we're going to get started. I have five pounds of russets and we're going to make three amazing meals today. Hopefully you caught the sarcasm when I said I picked these fresh from my garden. I mean, I kind of did. I put the bag out there from the store and picked them, but if you have a garden that has potatoes, I'm slightly jealous. I do not. I'm not a gardener. <laughs> but this is the next best thing. Just grab them from your store. I lose my breath whenever I see you. Hey, 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 potato party over at my house. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you are coming so I can have enough potatoes prepared. So I am making these, well, three meals, but I'm making two of them ahead because time saver. I like to make my meals ahead. Plus it gives me a lot more ideas to share with you all. So the first thing I did was get some potatoes cut up into about quarters. So they would all cook nicely at about the same time frame. boil them up for four minutes. The rest of the potatoes, I would say I did maybe four potatoes and six potatoes, like pound wise per, well, maybe maybe three pounds for the smaller pot and seven pounds for the larger. I don't know, I just kind of guesstimated. Then the next ones I chopped into about eighths, got in some cold water with those, got those boiling. So for me, my stove top, my perfect potato for mashed potatoes is 12 minutes once it starts to boil. So it takes about three minutes for my water to get to boil. I don't add any salt or seasonings or anything. I do that afterwards. But for the eighth chunks, these I am mashing. And like I said, it takes me 12 minutes for my perfect mashed potato once they start boiling. Did you ever stop and think, why spend too much time just getting ready? Here is meal number one. Let's put this beautiful mashed potato and mushroom gravy together. So I have some mushrooms, seasonings. I am amping it up a lot and making it a lot creamier. Adding some coconut milk, you can knock out that if you want to and really reduce the price and make it way more budget friendly if you want to do a veggie broth. I make my own veggie broth. I'll leave down in the description box below my recipe. I just use homemade scraps like the onion I was just chopping up. I save those scraps and put them in my veggie broth. So I get coconut milk either at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's because I find it to be the best price unless it's on sale at Smith's. It's about $2.29 I think at Smith's, $1.89 to $1.99 at Whole Foods, and then $1.79 at Trader Joe's. And I like the, okay, you can get the reduced fat or their full fat. I like the flavor of the reduced fat more. I don't know if it's just like less coconutty and more, I don't know. I just like it better. I know you can buy the whole fat and then cut it. I've tried that. Don't like it as much. I don't know. Something about the reduced fat tastes better to me. So I got onions in a pan with some water. I don't cook with oil, personal preference. I just think it tastes weird. Again, you do you, I'll do me. You, you just take the idea and go with it as you will. That's what I did with this recipe anyways. Uh, got a bunch of seasonings into the pot, added my coconut milk, and then I also added... I also added my slurry, my flour slurry. So it was a quarter cup of gluten-free flour with a half a cup of cold water. And the reason I added that now is because I'm not chopping my mushrooms. I'm leaving them whole, just again, personal preference. I think it just has a lot more better texture. And so that way the flour would really incorporate really well to thicken my gravy. I did end up adding a little bit more water. Yes, the mushrooms are going to reduce and like, they're gonna liquefy a little bit more. You don't have to do that. I like my gravy kind of like on the medium side when it comes to like super thick or super thin. I kind of like it right in the halfway point so you can do however you would like that. So my potatoes are all in this, I almost call this a pan. I'm not sure why it's a bowl. Anyways, add all my potatoes to a bowl once they are cooked to my perfection. And I just mash them with a fork. And I only add a little bit of the cooking water to mine until I have a nice chunky texture. You could do a hand mixer if you wanted to. Mine broke a couple of days ago, so I didn't use that. You could use a potato masher. You could use an immersion blender. I like mine to be slightly chunky, so I find either a fork or a hand mixer is best for me. And then once I add the seasonings in, I will stir them again with a spatula. And I do feel like once 
they're kind of like cooling down a little bit. The texture is perfection. So these potatoes that you just saw me season, I am popping in a Tupperware container and smashing them down and getting all the air out and putting them in the refrigerator. And you're gonna have to stay tuned until the end of the video to see what I am doing with these because they have to fully cool for at least six to eight hours. I'm doing a full day because that's perfection. Putting them in my refrigerator, stay tuned until the end of the video. You're gonna wanna see what I'm doing with this group of mashed potatoes. Let's get back to the first meal with the mushroom gravy. Let's have some fun and plate it up like a professional home chef. We're gonna add our potatoes. We're gonna add our beautiful mushroom gravy, which is so good. I'm actually gonna share another recipe, well, idea to share with you guys with this mushroom gravy next week. So next Thursday, make sure you're subscribed. You give me a thumbs up and you let me know that you're gonna try this gravy. It's so good. If you're not gluten-free, just use regular flour. You could also use cornstarch as a slurry if you want. Again, I kind of made mine on the medium side. It's not super thin, not super thick. Do whatever you would like, but here is my final plate. It looks so amazing. I couldn't even wait for this to like cool down. I was enjoying this while I was finishing recipe number two. It's so good. I hope you guys really love it. It's super inexpensive. And delicious. So here is recipe number two. While my first pot was going and my mushroom gravy was going, I had this pot of potatoes. Like I said, I cut these into quarters. I let those go for about three-ish minutes. I should have done a little bit longer, but my goal here is to do like a twice baked, if you will, a boil and then baked. I'm not trying to smash them. You don't want them that soft. You want them just soft enough where you can kind of pluck them with a fork a little bit to get some flavor infused. So if you want to go a little bit farther on the boil, you can, but about three minutes I found was perfect for what I was trying to do and for my personal taste preferences. Let me be honest. I don't know a single thing that I haven't done to make you notice me. Let me be real here. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this My hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me. But this time, this time, girl, I know what's bothering me. I need somebody to love. Oh, na, 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 na. Don't you see what's wrong with me? I mixed together a really beautiful sauce, and I will put the recipe for this sauce in the description box below. And you're going to heavily cover your potatoes. Then pop them into the oven at 375 for about 25 to 30 minutes. You can turn them, you can cover them fully, but I wanted just one side covered for myself because I thought it would look really pretty, but you can really immerse the entire potato into the sauce if you want to. So, so good. If you cook with oil, you can get a nice crispy potato or you can cook them a little bit longer. Like I said, you can cover them completely in sauce. These were perfect for me. And here we go, we're gonna plate again. These made my kitchen smell so good. I have shared a lot of lemon, mustard, garlic style potatoes here on my channel. I didn't have any lemon on hand, so I used apple cider vinegar, which is a great replacement. These were so good. And honestly, I just served them with a can of green beans. You could do any vegetable that you would like, but a can of green beans is like 55 cents. It's the perfect 50-50 plate. So good, so inexpensive. This meal literally cost me like 75 cents. And I have a ton of veggies, a ton of starch, which is what I really, really love, and a lot of flavor. And look how beautiful this plate is. I'm so happy with this. Good morning. As promised, I was going to share what I did with those extra mashed potatoes. I'm about to get some meals ready because I have a little extra time this morning. I'm gonna finish up that meal, but I also decided to make dinner ahead of time for tonight. And then all I have to do is warm it up. I'm always thinking 
ahead of what my future self will thank me for and my future self was a really crazy busy day it's going to take the time to make dinner and it's with potatoes and i thought i would share it with you guys for more potato meal inspiration sheet pan meal, baby reds, zucchini, balsamic, sea salt, garlic. And it was so good. And if you're curious, I knew I wasn't going to be home till really late this evening. So I made it ahead and then just warmed it up and we were good to go. It tastes really good. You can warm it up in, back into your oven, in a skillet, in the microwave, in the air fryer, whatever you prefer. I think sheet pan meals, one pot meals always taste better when they're reheated, but that's probably just me. And y'all know this by now. I say this in every video. I think I've already said this a few times. I'll eat it hot, I'll eat it cold. I like cold food. <laughs> but I also always try to make sure I have lots of stuff on hand. And if you're curious, I made the other meals yesterday, some we had for lunch, some we had for dinner. A lot of them were for meal prep, but I wanted to get this dish made. And I thought, you know what? I'll share it with you because it is a potato recipe. Super inexpensive. You could use russets if you want, but baby reds, go so well with balsamic and then just ladle in the garlic, like as much garlic as you have, just like dump it in there. I roasted it at 425 for about 35 minutes and I felt like it was perfect. waiting for but probably not because you've already probably guessed what it is I'm making with these mashed potatoes so I get this looks gross it's mashed potatoes smashed into a Tupperware container doesn't look that appealing I usually make mashed potato french fries which is what this is in my air fryer I save leftover mashed potatoes I smash them down and then I cut them after they've been sitting for at least a day in my refrigerator. I feel like it's perfect. Sometimes I even freeze them to like speed it up, but they have to be like firm-ish. I usually do it in my air fryer, but every time I share that with my air fryer, I have at least a dozen comments of people saying, hey, how can I make this in my oven? So today we're making it in my oven and this was actually my breakfast this day. They're so good. Every single time I make them, I wish I had more on hand for future days because I end up eating all of them at once because they're so good, they're so crispy. If you're gonna do your air fryer, I would honestly just do them the same way I do french fries in the air fryer. I think ours is roast is at 400 for eight or nine minutes. In the oven, I do 425 for 25 minutes. And I do them in a 
glass baking dish and I grabbed a small one. You can do a big one, you can do a sheet pan, you can do whatever you want. I don't move them. Once they're in there, I don't turn them because they're a little bit fragile, especially as they start to heat up. You can see they're kind of getting a little bit fragile now as I am putting them in the dish, but they are so crispy on the outside and nice and chewy in the inside. Oh my gosh, they're so good. If you have never made a mashed potato uh, french fry, you absolutely have to. I've made them with sweet potatoes, russets, I've made them with reds, multiple actually kinds of sweet potatoes, both the traditional orange and then the Japanese. They're so good, you guys. And then now you have an oven recipe. Like I said, 425, about 25 minutes, and they're so delicious. It's the perfect breakfast if you have the time for it because they're crispy. And I feel like you have to eat them as soon as they come out of the oven or the air fryer because they're crispy. Oh, they're so good. And I had them with some Carolina yellow barbecue sauce from Trader Joe's, which is one of our favorites. Look how golden brown and crispy they are. I know you can imagine the crunch. Oh my gosh, they are super crunchy. And then like I said, the inside is like a mashed potato. And now you know why I like to have the textured mashed potatoes because saving them for mashed potato fries is like, it's so hard to wait 24 hours for these and then to cook them, but it's so worth it. The good things in life are worth waiting for. You know, I love when you guys tune in to my new videos each and every week, and I love to say thank you because I appreciate you so much. If you try any of today's meal ideas, I hope you tag me over on Instagram at Flourishing Miranda. Go follow me over there if you ever want some real life content. Plus, make sure to follow me over on Flourishing Home. I'm having an amazing time sharing cleaning, organizing, decluttering, all the home content. You're gonna start to see a lot more decor because the space behind me shouldn't, fingers crossed, be empty for too much longer. But anyways, I will see you next Thursday. Same time, same place. See you then. Bye-bye.